I'm Charlene. Welcome to this episode of our new series called Famous Rivals. So this series is not about saying which store is better because each of them has their own unique way of making that particular dish. Mm, rather it's about seeing what the differences are and finding out more about their backstories of how they came about and where they are now. This week on Famous Rivals, let's find out more about Katong Laksa! Hi, I'm Aswan. I'm here to help you. When we start in the beginning, we are called Laksa. Katong is in the 49th. Then we go to 43, 43, and then we go to 57, 59. Just是放在一起,因為沒有買店的關係嘛,起屋子,我們就放在一起了 這周吃的真的很辛苦 我们也是不管了，我们只是做我们的生意的，举动我们都不管了，做生意的他们他们做法我们也没有做法了，重点是我们做的东西出来，人家吃了会回头就好，没有办法控制人家做生意的嘛，我不是讲我的好吃啊，
she do a lot of research on the laksa and try to fine tune her own recipe to suit everyone's taste but we are still using the same recipe where my mum just started. The locals still like the normal seafood we used to put in, uh, like cockles, prawns, all that. So to maintain the consistency, we actually weigh every ingredients. In Katong area last time, there's a lot of Katong laksa. So she decided to add some numbers in front so easier for customers to memorize. It. My mom chosen 3 to 8 cars in Cantonese means prosperity in business, sunny fun. Everyone is doing their own business, you see. So they, are, they have their own customer. So it's like, we just do our best to serve good laksa. So right now we're here at 328 Katong Laksa at East Coast Road. Basically the story goes, right? So remember how the Ng brothers actually set up a store at 49 mm -hmm. East Coast Road? So after the landlord decided to raise the price, the Ng brothers actually moved out. His mom decided to start selling laksa at um, 49, which is actually just across the road. Mm -hmm. But times have changed <laughs> and they actually moved to just 51. across the road here. So this is actually 51. 3 to 8 laksa is actually the laksa that I always grew up eating. But now it's changed. It's an air-conditioned place. So 3 to 8 laksa, you've probably heard of it just because back in 2013, this was the store that Gordon Ramsay challenged yeah. and lost to, by the way. <laughs> Woo, that local pride! <laughs> yeah, I think it's just testament to like how solid Katong Laksa is. And it's not just Gordon Ramsay, like this place, a wall of celebrities, yeah. really. They have three sizes, ranging from 550 to 750. We got the small, and this looks really big. Like, I can't imagine what the large looks like. <laughs> looks wise, very orange. <laughs> this is like very. sunset orange laksa. <laughs> so the broth itself, is very smooth, very consistent throughout. So with every bowl of laksa you get, you have a little packet of <laughs> sambal chili. Oh, wow. <laughs> Spicy. So the spice definitely comes out a lot more in this. I don't even know whether like, the seafood taste is that obvious. I think if you like spice, you'll definitely like their laksa. So for the noodles, right? Personally, I think that they are a little bit thicker, a little bit more towards like the QQ kind of side. So they seem to absorb a lot more of the broth into the noodles. Which is not a bad <laughs> thing. It's good that the noodles absorb the flavour. But I also think like, it's good that they are thick so they don't get soggy so fast. I'm just more intrigued by the background story of it all. Back then, there were so many stores opening the same kind of noodles, like four to five stores. Mm -hmm. And now, pretty much, there's only like, what, one or two? Kudos to them for trying to keep the original recipe yeah. the same way it is. Mm. Like, where they just have pretty simple ingredients, but ingredients that we're very familiar with. I feel like, over here, they really do try to preserve like what it originally was meant to be and like still very authentic. Like small small things like you know they put yeah. the chili in a packet, like a <laughs> yeah. plastic packet which is so good for people who cannot yeah. take spicy. Overall for the laksa, quantity wise I would say it's pretty decent. Like a small one would definitely fill you up. So what have you learned from the backstory of this? They're not actually rivals at all. They're yeah. just very like neutral like oh I also have a Katong Laksa stall. Yeah, yeah, we run our own business. We don't really care about, mm. you know, other people coming into this. And I feel like the rivalry is actually very like customer made. <laughs> like you're like, no, this is the original. No, mine is the yeah. original. Then you're like, fuck, 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 <laughs> But the people actually owning the stalls are like, mm. I mean, if you like our Laksa, can really. Yeah. So that was nice, I think, mm. finding out about that. It wasn't drama or anything. Each stall, they really just wanted to do their best mm. in their own dish. So yeah. obviously, they would have done their research and known what was around but it wasn't about like kicking anybody <laughs> out yeah. of the area they were all very passionate in what they were doing and creating but I think like um, for us uh, relevant to us today mm. I would say that the dishes are quite distinct in their own flavour mm. yeah if you like spicy go for 3 to 8 if you like it more like um, hearty, creamy, yeah. Mm. Go try out um, original Katong Laksa. Or just yeah. try both. Like us today, we <laughs> have like so many bowls of laksa. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of Famous Rivals. If you have any other suggestions on where we can check out for this series, leave it in the comments box below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And watch our other videos over there. Bye!